I, I love pastoring. I do, I do. All right. Hey, if you have your Bibles, open them up to John chapter 14 with me. The Lord gave me a word. I'm telling you right now, there is just a flow of revelation that the Holy Spirit has been given me. And, I, and so I love it because you know what? I'm a giver. And I'm not just going to hold on to it for myself. I want to give it to you guys. Amen? I want it to be a blessing to you guys how the Holy Spirit has blessed me with, with the truth uh, that he's showing me. So uh, John chapter 14. Let's look at uh, verses 12 through 14 to start off. Hallelujah. Are you guys enjoying the pool this morning? Yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes, it is. The water is good. Here we go, and it's stirring. Most assuredly, Jesus said, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. And greater works than these he will do, because I go to my Father. And whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Now jump down the road to, or I'm sorry, back uh, to Mark chapter 11. Oh, yes, back to Mark chapter 11. I'll read it every week if I have to. It's such a powerful passage. Jane spoke about faith today, gave that word about faith, and I'm like, all right, Holy Ghost is preaching it before I get up there. That's awesome. I love the confirmation. Here we go. Mark 11, 20 through 24. And it says, Now in the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. Say roots. And Peter, remembering, said to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree which you cursed has withered away. So Jesus answered and said to them, Have faith in God. That literally says, Have the God kind of faith. For assuredly I say to you, Whoever says to this mountain, Be removed, and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done. He will have whatever he says. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask, when you pray, believe you receive them, and you will have them. Now, here we go. Here we go. Today I want to talk about the topic of faith. I know some are saying, what? You're still on that? Yes, because there's another dimension I want to release to you today. Here's the, here's the thing. I want to go deeper into the topic and allow the Holy Spirit to lead the way where we end up, you know, he leads. But, but he knows exactly what each of us needs to hear, doesn't he? My prayer is, Lord, let me preach and teach something that which would perfect the faith of those that are there. Amen? That's what we want to do. It's like there's a puzzle coming together with every sermon. And so I want to take a puzzle piece that's missing and put it in where you go, oh, oh, okay, that's what that means. That's what I want to do. Amen? So, and many times when we talk about faith, when we hear messages about faith, it's kind of a a cliche kind of a thing. It's kind of just a surfacey thing, right? You know what I'm saying? We hear things, oh, you got to have faith. It's just kind of, you know, just surface. I don't know about you, but I want to go deeper. I want to know how this thing works. I want to, I mean, I want to go deeper in how it works in our life. So the title of my message is this, Kingdom Dynamics of Faith. Kingdom Dynamics of Faith. The first thing you need to understand is this, if as a Christian, if you right now think that it's foolishness to command and speak to objects, things, circumstances in your life, sickness, disease, infirmities, spiritual beings, if you think speaking to those things are foolish, let me tell you right now, I can promise you, you will never walk in the miraculous realm. You will never walk in the miraculous realm because Mark chapter 11 proves that our words connected with faith, no doubting, can impact the natural realm. All right? I, I don't know. I, I'm just telling you, I have this desire, a drive. I, I want to operate in the miraculous because I believe God has so much more for the body of Christ. He wants us to go so much deeper. We shouldn't be experiencing and living like the world. Amen? We're in Christ. We sit with him in heavenly places. Amen? 
So we, there's more. Say, there's more. Say, I want more. Faith is not only a belief or a conviction, but it's this. It's a spiritual force that the natural realm and every being in the spirit realm must obey. Faith is a spiritual force, okay? It's not just a belief, all right? Jesus is revealing to us that our faith can not only impact the natural realm, but it can override the natural realm. It over, say, it's an override. Our faith overrides. Don't you love that? Override. I love that word. That is why all things are possible with God, that there's nothing that is impossible with God because our faith overrides the natural realm. Are you following me so far? Oh, we're going to go deeper. Get ready. Now, faith in connection to our spoken words or our confession. Confession means to say the same thing as. Meaning we're speaking, we're confessing the word. That means we're saying the same thing as the word of God. So faith in connection to our spoken words, to our confession, and our prayer life is a requirement for it to have an effect because faith is a spiritual law. Now remember, spiritual law, I say this all the time and I'm going to keep reminding you, a spiritual law is a neutral thing. It can go one way or the other, all right? So faith can be used for the kingdom of God, but unfortunately it can be used for evil as well. It's a neutral thing. Are you following me? All right, so if Jesus and the Holy Spirit in the Word put such an emphasis on faith in connection to receiving and being effective on this earth, I don't know about you, but we as Christians should have an interest in that topic. Amen? And you should have a desire to learn more about it. All right? So in John 14, 12, Jesus said that we would do his works and greater works because he goes unto his Father in heaven. Now, he's talking about that we're going to do greater works because he's sending the Holy Spirit. He's going to heaven, and he's sending the Holy Spirit to the body of Christ. Amen? So not only are we going to do powerful things, but it's going to be great in, greater in scope because the Holy Spirit's coming for the whole body of Christ. Amen? He said that he would give us another comforter. That word another in the original, original means this, another of the same kind. So the same, listen, the same Holy Spirit that anointed our Savior is the same Holy Spirit that you have as a Christian. We need to get a revelation of this, all right? So Jesus obviously wants us to continue his disciples, he wants us to continue with his earthly ministry on this earth. Would you agree with that? All right. And to be able to do that, we need to know some things. We need to know some kingdom keys and how these spiritual laws work. And I love this about Jesus. He said, don't worry. He goes, I know you're sad that I'm going to leave, but when the Holy Spirit comes, he's going to show you more things. He's going he's to unwrap these things. Are you following me? This is where a lot of people get tripped up, and even in, dare I say, the faith movement. We are focused on word. You understand that, don't you? But here's the problem. If there's something that is not exactly in the word or something that stretches their faith, they, they, they throw it away. Are you following me? I'm telling you. Listen, I'm a Raymond grad. Hello. I'm a word guy. Amen. My point is this is that when the Holy Spirit gives you a revelation, it's going to be in line with the Word. Yes. The Holy Spirit's just unwrapping it and showing you more about that topic. You understand? So the general foundation is in the Word. Come on, somebody. I've seen too many of my faith, filled, my faith friends, Word of Faith friends, throw things away because it's not, I can't find chapter and verse for that one thing. Well, the Holy Spirit's showing you something. There's principles in the Word, and the Holy Spirit's giving you more revelation on how to operate in that. In other words, the, the Word of God says that we would cast out demons, right? It doesn't give us step-by-step -step, uh, directions on how to do that, but guess who does? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit likes on-the-job training, I found out, all right? So get doing it, and he'll lead and guide you, Amen. So we need to know about faith and the dynamics involved with it. I want to share with you something that the Holy Spirit revealed to me that was just blessed my socks off. All right, here we go. I believe this message right here, this thing is going to 
uh, give you some clarity on the topic. Instead of just saying cliche things and, and you know, thing, I, I can't stand that. We got to go deeper. Amen. Many Christians are confused about faith, all right? Almost like it's something they have to drum up in themselves and they end up feeling defeated or that they didn't hit this imaginary bar that's so high that's unattainable. Have you ever felt that way? You ever been through a situation, a circumstance, and it's like, I don't feel like I'm building enough faith for this thing, and then you end up feeling defeated, you end up feeling condemned. Are you, am I, is anyone breathing out here today? All right, good, 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 good. All right, here we go. So, many Christians are confused. They feel like there's a blockage, all right? Romans 10, 17 says this, that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So we know that the word of God is an active part in the building of faith process. Would you agree? Here's the deal. As a Christian, our spirit man is born again. You're, like I talked about even last week, our spirit man loves God. It's bent toward God. It's bent toward believing him without any hindrances. Would you agree with that? Because that sin nature in your spirit man has been removed, right? So your born again spirit man desires to obey him. Well, if that's true then, what is the missing factor? Here's what the Holy Spirit showed me. It's not as much about you getting faith as it is about you releasing the faith that's in your born-again spirit. Oh. It's like grabbing an empty bottle. How do I fill this thing up? How do I fill this thing up? Opposed to having a full bottle and a cap on and saying, okay, it's full. How do I loose this cap now? Are you following me? Listen to me. So, when we are reading the Word of God, it is controlling the valve that releases the faith on the inside of your spirit man. And that valve, are you ready for this? That valve is your soul, your mind, will, and emotions. Your mind or thought life is the valve that either blocks or releases the faith that is in your born-again spirit man. All right? So your mind is either renewed or unrenewed. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 through 2 talks about that, right? So faith comes because it is impacting your thought life or belief system. It renews it and it transforms it. I'm telling you, listen, your thought life is the valve that blocks the faith from coming out or releases it. This is what the Holy Spirit showed me. So an unrenewed mind blocks it. And, oh, you're, we're going to get into this. Get ready. And a renewed mind releases it, and you're blessed by it. So many Christians feel defeated because they feel like they will never have enough faith to receive the blessings. That's the problem with do, making cliche statements about faith. Because people hear it, they don't know how to apply it to their life, and they walk out of a service thinking, ah, I guess I'm never going to get to that. If you're dealing with a sickness, disease, or bondage in your body, right? When it's such an overwhelming thing in your life, you're feeling like, oh, am I ever going to get there? I feel it's a matter of releasing what is inside of you. Mm. So the Holy Spirit gave me a vision in connection to this truth about our soul or thought life being the valve that releases faith from our spirit man. Listen to this. Ready for this? Go with me now. The Holy Spirit showed me that there is a hose, okay? You're connecting a hose to a spigot on your house, all right? So you connect that hose to the spigot. And then on the other side of it, you have the sprayer that has that hand valve, right? What do you do after you connect the hose? You turn the water all the way on. Has any water come out yet? But the hose is filled with water. The hose is filled with pressure. It's filled with water. Are you following me? You turn the water on at the spigot. It fills up with water, but nothing is released until you squeeze that handle on the sprayer. That handle at the end of, your, of the hose is your mind, is your soul. Are you following me now? I'm telling you, this is going to set someone free. This is going to make your faith just skyrocket. When it's closed, it blocks the water or the faith. When it opens, it allows the water or the faith to be released. 
You, and guess what? You control the handle of how much faith comes out. God is not responsible for how much faith you have. Are you following me? No. I find it interesting that there are different levels of faith mentioned in the Word of God. I feel fire of the Holy Ghost here today. I find it interesting that the Word of God mentions different levels of faith. It mentions no faith, little faith, great faith, and faith is a mustard seed. All right? And it is all dependent upon you hearing the word of God. And when, you, when you're hearing the word, it is getting in your spirit. But most importantly, you want to know what it's really affecting? Your thought life. It's all dependent upon your thought life. The restrictor of the faith from coming forth is your soul, your mind, will, and emotions. Now, there is one override. Say override. override. There is one override, and that's called the gift of faith. The spiritual gift of faith that 1 Corinthians 12 talks about. Now, here's, here's what it is. The gift of faith is when you're in a situation or a circumstance, and supernaturally, the Holy Spirit gives you faith. Are you hearing me? To carry you through that thing to a desired result. But listen, that's a gift of faith. That doesn't happen all the, all the time. 99% of the time, it's your personal faith that receives from God. Now, so, it, the Word of God says that faith without works is dead. Listen to this. Our works or actions are connected to your soul, your will your mind, will, and emotions. And it connected faith with that passage with works. Faith without works is dead. So your will is involved in acting in faith. Are you getting this? Am I, is this clear so far? Yes. Good, because we're going deeper. So here we go. Go to Matthew chapter 14. Don't you love the Word of God? Yes. See, you know when the Holy Spirit has anointed a message because it keeps you on the edge of your seat. It keeps you awake. <laughs> Amen? Like, what's he going to say next? What's he going to say next? I want to hear what he's going to say. I love that. Amen? Matthew 14. Let's look at 22 through 25 to start off with here. Immediately, Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side. <laughs> and and he, wa, uh, other side. While he sent the multitudes away, and when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. Now, when evening came, he was alone there, but the boat was now in the middle of the sea, tossed by the waves, for the wind was contrary. Verse twenty-five. Now, in the fourth watch, underline that. Now in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them, walking on the sea. Now, in Jesus' earthly ministry, how many of you know, I say it all the time, we, got, we have got to know and meditate on this, that Jesus operated as a man, a human, anointed with the Holy Spirit. If you take hold of that, then you can say, wow, wow. Okay, Jesus said we would do greater works. Yeah, but that was Jesus. No, no, no. He was just like us, anointed with the Holy Spirit, and he wants us as his ambassadors to carry on in the miraculous. Carry on with healing the sick. Come on, somebody. Carry on with the work of the gospel. Amen? All right, so carrying on here. So I want you to notice that Jesus went up to the mountain by himself to pray. Did you catch that? Jesus, I don't know if you know this or not, but Jesus never had a faith problem. Did, did Jesus ever have a faith problem? Jesus never did, but guess who did? Some people, when he was praying for them in Nazareth, listen, his hometown, because, here's why, because they were familiar with him. 
Familiarity will kill the anointing quicker than anything. That is why, let me just say this, that is why you, most of the time, cannot minister to family. See, you know, sometimes mom and dads get offended. Why are they listening to you and not me? They're too familiar with you. Get them outside of that zone. Connect them with someone outside. Are you hearing me, somebody? Familiarity kills the anointing. It even killed it for Jesus in Nazareth. It said he could only do a few things there. Just, just healed a few sick folk, right? Just someone who had a cut or something. I don't know. But that's Jesus Christ himself. So familiarity causes unbelief. Say unbelief. unbelief. Unbelief takes place in your thought life. They close that valve. Are you following me? They close the valve of their faith. And Jesus, the anointing, couldn't do anything for them. Are you following me? So I want you to notice that Jesus prayed all the time at night. There's something about praying. At, I love praying at night. I love it. If you don't have a prayer life like Jesus had, listen, don't expect to do the greater works. There's some, Jesus was our example. He was our example. Are you following me? He prayed. He ministered during the day. He did what he had to do. But man, he got up on the high point of that mountain all night and he started to pray. Now, you're going to have seasons of that. I'm not saying you'd never sleep. You got to sleep, right? Even Jesus said to his disciples, come on, let's come come away. Let's go hang out and relax a little bit. You've got to be refreshed. Amen? Workaholics, where are you at? All right. But listen, we must dedicate ourselves to personal times of prayer. It, it does. It strengthens our faith, and it will help us engage. Listen, engage the Holy Spirit and the angels on our behalf. Now, I want to show you something that maybe you've never heard of before. This account with Peter here, him walking on the water, which we're going to get into in a moment. This happened at the fourth watch of the night. This time frame, the fourth watch of the night is between 3 a.m. and 6 a.m. That time frame is one of the most active times in the spirit realm. Did you know that? It's one of the most active times in the spirit realm for the kingdom of God and the kingdom of darkness, unfortunately, all right? Um, several very important biblical event, events happened during the fourth watch. Jacob wrestled with God and met him face to face. Moses led the, the Israelites across the Red Sea in the fourth watch. Gideon defeated the Midianites in the fourth watch. Peter walked on water in the fourth watch. The angels appeared to the shepherds in the field in the fourth watch. Jesus was resurrected from the dead on the fourth watch, toward the end of that fourth watch. The bridegroom woes, woos his, his uh, bride in the night hours in Song of Solomon, in the night hours. Listen, have you ever woken up during that 3 a.m. and 6 a.m.? You've had a horrible nightmare. Or you had some dream that impacted you, and you roll over and you look at the clock, it's like four in the morning. Like sometime, be, there is so much spiritual activity happening. In fact, it, for more on this, Perry Stone has a teaching on it. it. Whenever you have a chance, look up on YouTube, Perry Stone, The Fourth Watch. Powerful teaching. Um, so this is one of those deeper things here. But, but listen, prayer during that time is extremely powerful and rewarding if you can stay awake. Come on, somebody. It is. It is so rewarding. In fact, some of the most powerful spiritual experiences I've ever had, seen in the Spirit, seen angels, having encounters in the Spirit, have happened between 3 a.m. and 6 a.m. You don't believe me? Try it for yourself. Press in. And here's another thing. You're, so, you're, 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 you're quieted down at that time. Are you following me? Where you're in tune. You can hear from him more clearly. During the day, there's a hustle and bustle and blah, blah, blah. Right? But during that time, man, it's silent, quiet. It's just you and God. And that's why I believe so many spiritual experiences have happened during the fourth watch, 3 a.m., to 6 a.m. Now, go to Matthew 14. 
26 through 33. Look at this. We're going to talk about Peter walking on water here. Back to the faith thing. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, Jesus, they were troubled, saying, It is a ghost. And they cried out for fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Be of good cheer. It is I. Do not be afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come out to you on the water. So he said, Come. And when Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw that the wind was boisterous, and, and he was afraid, and beginning to sink, underline beginning, beginning, beginning to sink, he cried out, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. Then those who were in the boat came and worshiped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. Now, when talking about this account of Jesus walking on the water, most people say, again, it's always this. Well, that was Jesus. But remember, again, let me remind you again, he limited himself as a man on this earth, anointed with the Holy Spirit. Amen? And that gives us confirmation that we can walk in the miraculous because we are his ambassadors and he wants us to carry on with it. If there was a time, if it opened up that you had to walk on water, you could do it. If God had to part a sea for you to get across from the enemy, he would do it today. Are you, are you following me? Yes. Now listen. So here we go. Even Philip was translated by the Spirit. Remember, he was ministering to that eunuch and it said immediately the Holy Spirit caught him up and brought him to another location, supernaturally. Oh, we're going to go deeper. I'm telling you, you get ready. I believe the miraculous is going to open up in a greater way on this earth because we are in the end times. There's going to be so much persecution that we're going to need the miracle working power of God to get out of certain situations. Are you following me? So listen, don't disqualify yourself from walking in the miraculous. Amen? It is definitely for us. So here we go. Let's get, dig deeper into this account. So the disciples, they were afraid when they saw Jesus. They thought they saw a spirit or a ghost, right? But I love what Jesus said. He said, be of good cheer. It is I. Do not be afraid. Isn't that great? I love that. Those words, listen to this. Now let's break this account down in connection to faith. Those words of Jesus penetrated Peter's soul. Say soul. It penetrated his mind, his will, and his emotions. And it took the fear out of Peter's emotions or out of his soul. It affected all three things, mind, will, and emotions. Are you following me right now? At that moment... His mind became renewed, and the valve opened up, and Peter's faith was released. And Peter said this, Lord, if it's you, command me to come out to you. Now, many people think that Jesus is the one that said, Peter, get out of that boat and go. No, no, no. Peter was the one that initiated it. He said, if it's you, bid me to come out to you. Are you following me? What else was Jesus going to say? He wasn't going to say, no, Peter, don't get out of that boat. It's really me, but don't come out of that boat. Of course he was going to say, yeah, come on out. It is me, Peter. Are you following me right now? Listen, remember, Peter has been following Jesus around, listening to his preaching, listening to his teaching. So Peter's spirit man was full of the word. In fact, Jesus is the word. And Peter was following him around. Are you following me now? So Jesus tells Peter, come out of the boat. Peter literally walked on water. This is a fact. Are you following me? That, I think many times we read these things again, and we think they're just some bedtime story thing, right? Peter literally walked on water. Again, Jesus didn't ask him to. Peter initiated it. Faith will override the laws in the natural realm. Now watch this. Peter walked on water, 
But then there was a shift. His focus shifted from Jesus to the wind, to the conditions in the natural realm. And at that very moment, the fear entered where? His soul. Fear entered his soul or his emotions, and the valve of his soul closed right off. Now, listen to this. So it cut it off. So we know fear is an emotion, amen? Allowing the wrong emotions to manifest in your soul will cut miraculous faith off of you. It will cut you off. It will separate you from walking in the miraculous. It turns off the override button. Now, are you seeing how important the soul is in the faith process? Are you getting this? And here's something you never probably thought of. Listen to this. I want you to notice that Peter didn't free fall into the water immediately. Did he? Nope. It says what? That he began to sink? Listen to this. It was almost as his faith was shrinking. That's the proportion he started to sink. Are you following? Come on, somebody. I never saw that in the word before until I studied for this. I never, I'm giving you fresh bread, even from me, a Rama grad back in 2004. I, this is not my first rodeo with the word. The Holy Spirit showed me something new. 23 years into ministry. You're never too old to get fresh revelation. Are you hearing me? So it was almost as that valve was closing that he started to sink. And Jesus' words are a lesson to us all. He said this, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? I want you to notice this. He said little faith. He didn't say no faith. Did you catch that? He said, you of little faith. So Peter still had some, but not enough to stay walking on water. Not enough to keep him on top of the water. It was this. You could say it like this. It was a slow fade. In fact, it was slow enough to where Jesus could come over to him and reach out to him. It wasn't just a free fall into the water. So Jesus was telling Peter this. He said, you could have continued to walk on water if you maintained your focus on me and kept doubt out of your soul, out of your mind, will, and emotions. Man, this is powerful. I can't take credit for this. This is the Holy Ghost that revealed this. Listen to this. Jesus Jesus didn't say to Peter, uh, didn't say Peter walked on water because he told him to come, but rather it was because of his own personal faith to do it. If it was Jesus giving him the ability to walk on water, follow me, Peter would not have sank into the water because if it was Jesus' faith or ability, he wouldn't have sank. Are you following me? It was Peter, Peter's faith. It was the conditions of Peter's soul. That's why you see people walking at different levels of faith. You, you, that's why you got people at different, people are holding that sprayer at different levels of faith. You see them when they first get saved, they're on fire for the Lord. Prayers get answered like that. And then all of a sudden they get some buffets, they get some trials and all that. And all of a sudden that valve starts to close a little bit. Now it's a little bit tougher. Now some more things happen. You know, family members are coming against them. You know how it goes. And it starts to close even more. And all of a sudden, their life becomes an absolute train wreck. Yes. You need to open that valve up again. Yes. Come on, somebody. So we know that it wasn't Jesus' ability that kept Peter up there. Or we know it was Peter's faith that kept him walking. And it was Peter's lack of faith that made him sink. Amen? So faith is released 
and spoken or acted. Faith released, spoken or acted upon is powerful. Your level of faith, I'm going to say this a thousand times today. Your level of faith is determined by how open the valve of your soul, your mind, will, and emotions are. How much faith are you releasing? Amen? So when you read the word, it's twofold what's happening. You're renewing your mind and you're filling your spirit, man, with the word. And I'm going to say this, the most important part is probably the renewing of your mind. Again, because your spirit, man, is bent toward God, bent toward believing him. When you're walking in the spirit, come on, somebody, you want to please God. Amen? But when you're walking in the flesh, things of the spirit are foolishness. Are you following me? I really want you to take hold of the fact that Peter released his faith and then cut it off in his soul. Mind, will, and emotions. So fear and doubt are an emotion, which is a part of the soul. It's, it's a, a b- part of your belief system, all right? The doubt didn't enter until his focus shift on, shifted onto the wind or on the natural realm. That's why I always say, stay focused on what the Word says. Amen? Our soul must be maintained every day and kept in check constantly. Look how fast the soul valve... Think about this. Look how fast that valve of the soul opened for Peter. That confidence, that faith. I'm going to do this. Tell me to come out to you. If it's you, I'm coming out. Look how fast it opened to do a miracle to override the natural. And then look how fast it shut. It happens like that. That's why we got to constantly maintain our thought life. Don't let your thought life run wild on you. Someone watching online, listen, don't let your thought life run wild on you. Amen? When our spirit man and our soul are lined up in agreement, powerful faith is released. It releases water-walking faith. Now, I want to show you something else in connection to your faith being in your spirit, man. Jude 20. Jude 20 says that, uh, that we are building ourselves up on our most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. We know when we pray in tongues, right? When we pray in tongues, it's building up. It says right here, our most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, all right? Not your soul. Your soul, mind, will, and emotions are not benefited one bit by praying in tongues. In fact, 1 Corinthians 14 says, when you pray in tongues, your natural mind is unfruitful. In fact, your natural mind will fight you and say, "You're, you're being stupid here, just shut up. You don't even know what you're saying. That's the point. The Word of God says your natural mind, your soul, will be unfruitful. But it says you're building up your most holy faith Praying in tongues, praying in the Spirit. Amen? Amen. So, this proves the fact that faith comes and is built up in our born-again spirit, man. But getting into the Word of God, it renews our mind to release that valve of our faith. Amen? Amen? It's forming that belief system on the inside of you. Jesus warned us, be careful how you hear be, be careful, number one, who you're listening to, yeah. and be careful how you hear it. Do you know you can hear something that's right and you can hear it twisted? Yeah. You ever had that before? Yeah. When you said something to somebody and they get all offended, and it's like, why are they so offended? They heard it wrong. Right. They heard it through the, the twisted condition of their soul. They need healing in their emotions, healing in their soul. They're always coming from that place of rejection. Are you following me? Oh, come on, somebody. Now, so faith-filled words. I want to touch this now. This is where we're really going to go deep. Are you ready for this? Do you like when I combine the science aspect with the Bible? Get ready. Here we go. Faith-filled words have a frequency. They have a vibration that releases power, that releases energy because it's connected to the Holy Ghost. Amen? When the anointing comes upon a person to minister for a specific situation, there is a boldness attached to it. Have you ever had that? When you were nervous to pray for someone, but all of a sudden a boldness, you felt the anointing come upon you. Amen? 
Have you ever heard a person with depression talk? They sound very low. You know, like Eeyore on, uh, what is that? I'm never gonna mount anything. Right? Okay, come on. You, you hearing me now? A person with depression, they have a very low, just there's no life in them, right? Oh, someone needs to hear this. They have a very low frequency. There's no life or pep in their step. There's a heaviness. I'm going deeper right now. Depression, sickness, disease, de the demonic, all of these things attached to the kingdom of darkness. Are you ready for this? Have all been scientifically proven to have low frequency. Listen to this. It is a, this is not new age. I don't know if you know it or not, but new agers didn't create anything. They've taken what God created, and, they, and what they did was they just taken God out of it. But God created everything. Are you following me? Here we go. It is a proven scientific fact that the cells of a person associated with depression, sickness, disease are vibrating at a very low frequency. AFib. AFib is an irregular heartbeat. It's a short somewhere in the electrical system of the cardiovascular area. You agree with that? That's medical science, right? Our body is full of frequencies or electrical impulses. That's how God created us, all right? Uh, in fact, when someone, uh, their heart stops, what do they do? They put paddles on them to give them an electrical charge. Okay, now follow me. When we pray for someone, it, we're like giving an electric, electrical charge to counteract that low frequency in their cells, in their body, in that organ. Now listen to me. On the other hand, those that are filled with joy, peace, and health, science has proven this. It's all on the internet. Go look it up for yourself. Science has proven that their cells and body is vibrating at a high frequency. You ever hear someone say, I don't like the vibe of that person. Yeah. Now I'm giving you some reason of what's going on here. That's, there, there's some truth to that, people. Are you following me? It's no wonder. Let's connect it with the word. Now, it's no wonder why Jesus said that the joy of the Lord is our strength. It is a life force on the inside of us. And the kingdom of darkness manifests death. They come to steal, kill, and destroy. That is why the Word of God tells us to meditate on the positive things, according to Philippians 4, 8, right? It releases life in us. And guess where we meditate on those things? In our soul. Mind, will, and emotions. The valve of your faith. Listen to this. This is right off the internet here. This is science. This is not new age. This is science. Listen. Listen. When something vibrates at a lower frequency, it feels heavy. A spirit of heaviness. Whereas things vibrating with a higher frequency, get this, feels lighter. Feels lighter, more at ease physically and emotionally. Lower vibrational energies include sadness, stress, Whereas higher vibrational energies might include happiness, joy, and love. <laughs> the anointing destroys the yoke of bondage in us. Are you following me? And it releases life. Well, listen to this. When the glory or, or manifest presence of God is in this place, I felt it this morning during praise and worship like a wave. All right? When it's manifested in a place... One of the manifestations I feel is this. Oh, the only earthly thing you can compare the manifest presence to. Are you ready for this? A wave of energy. And when, that, when the presence of God is in a place, what happens? You start to get happy, don't you? You start to feel what? Free. Because what the Word says, where the Spirit of the Lord, there is freedom. I'm telling you right now, science and the Word of God go hand in hand because God created science. Yes. True science. Yes. 
Don't let these new agers hijack this stuff. This belongs to the body of Christ. Are you following me? So it has been scientifically proven that when the manifest presence of God is present, the people have actually done this. They brought these, these things into a place that there is a high frequency. And, and many start to feel that lightness. They feel like the burdens and heaviness that they walked in church with start to lift off as the presence of God comes upon them. There is a shift. Even their, <laughs> even their physical body, even the very cells of your body respond to the presence of Almighty God. It's no wonder that Psalm 1611 says that in his presence there is fullness of joy. The very presence of God reaches on the inside of you. I love that. It affects every part of you. So let me tell you this. So true science confirms the word of God. Like I said, because God created science. Amen? Here, here's the thing. I guarantee someone out in, out in la-la land out there, you know, they're going to hear this message and they're going to say, man, this guy, he's going new I'm not going new age. I'm sticking with the word. Amen. This is scientific proven stuff, and the word backs up exactly what I'm saying. This is what I'm saying that a lot, I'm sorry to say it, a lot of my word of faith friends would throw this out the window. But make no mistake, God created it all. Science points to him in every aspect of the word. So listen to this. When dealing with, I'm almost done. Dealing with demons, sickness, and disease, and infirmities, and everything attached to the curse of the kingdom of darkness, start using your authority. Now, some people asked me, they said, Pastor James, why do you get so loud when you pray for people? <laughs> why? Why do you get so bold? Do you really have to do that? I'm just trying to raise their vibrational frequency, baby, with the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Here's the key. When the anointing comes upon you, a boldness comes upon you. You need to let that boldness come out. The Word of God says when the anointing comes upon a person, it turns them into another person. So I want to encourage you, if you're ministering to someone, let that boldness come out. And know that you're releasing the anointing of the Holy Spirit. You're attacking those demons. You're attacking that sickness and disease. And you're raising that frequency on the inside. <laughs> Hallelujah. Listen to this. How you say something matters. I guarantee you, you're, you're, you are, you're not going to talk to a loved one like you talk to someone who's trying to harm a loved one. Are you following me? Are you following me? Oh, please, would you let them go? I don't want you to hurt them. No, you're like, get your hands off of them. Yes. It's time to get angry at the devil. Yes. Yes. Come on, somebody. Yes. You're, how you say something matters. Yes. It does matter. Yes. Come on. Yes. If you got a dog biting your foot and your leg, man, about ready to rip that thing off, you're like, oh, please let go. <laughs> Just would you please let go? You're like, get off of my leg. That's how we need to be with sickness, disease, infirmity, and demons. Come on, somebody. We need to get rid of that thief in Jesus' name that's trying to destroy, destroy you. Amen? Amen? Steal, kill, and destroy. If a thief broke into your home, you're not going to be nice and calm. Oh, no, there's going to be some authority behind it. Amen? So we need to speak with authority. Get angry at the enemy. Amen? Amen? I am allowing the anointing that's coming upon me to minister and flow through me with boldness and authority. That's why I do it, okay? Sorry the eardrums hurt, but we'll get the other parts healed, amen? We'll deal with the eardrums later, all right? <laughs> so listen to this. So my voice is connected to the anointing. When you minister to someone, your voice is, is connecting to the anointing. It's confronting that frequency of darkness. Sickness, disease, and infirmity. And then as you do that, there is a shift. Say shift. shift. I love that word. Here's a shift. There is a frequency wave released in the spirit that affects and shifts the natural realm. 
Hallelujah. Now, so, again, what I really wanted you to get from today, I know there's a lot of points, but listen, what I really want you to get is this. If you want more faith, Start shifting that valve in your soul. Start renewing your mind. Start believing God. That takes place in your soul. And it lies. Here's your, here's your unrenewed mind. Here's your spirit, man. As you read the word, you're bringing them, you're lining them up. That's when power happens. Amen? Hallelujah. So we as Christians, we have the Holy Spirit li uh, living on the inside of us. And he is limited. Believe it or not, he is limited or released to move based on the condition of our soul. Yes. Don't hold the Holy Spirit hostage in your life. Release him to flow through you. Amen? Amen? That is why God wants us to renew our mind. So church, if you will get the word of God in your spirit, man, and allow it to renew your mind, you will see miracles, signs, and wonders manifest in your life like never before. You will see breakthrough take place, and you need to stop Feeling defeated like you will never hit that imaginary bar. It's in you. Get the word in you. Renew your mind and you will see it. It's time to open the valve of our soul. Keep it open and release mountain moving and water walking faith. Let's stand up in this place. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I knew this one was going to be a barn burner. Woo. Lord, thank you for that word. Lord, that blessed me. To, uh, Lord, I, I want more. We all want more, Lord. Yes. Yes. I pray you'd continue to give us more revelation, more understanding of your word, how to apply it, kingdom keys, how to use those keys. See, these are things the enemy does not want us to know. He hates when the body of Christ gets more revelation. Now, maybe there's someone here you've never made Jesus Lord of your life. If you've never made him Lord of your life, guess what? You're on a one-way road to hell, and eventually the lake of fire. It says hell will be thrown into the lake of fire for eternity. If you want to make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life today, today is the day of salvation. You don't know when you're going to take your last breath. I did a celebration of life service yesterday. We need the reality, reality of eternity. Amen? If you want to make Jesus Lord of your life, come forward this morning. I want to pray with you to get born again. Now, maybe you're, you've fallen away from the Lord, and you need to rededicate your life to the Lord. Maybe you're one, man, that valve, whew, that valve seems stuck on the other side. It's locked. It's not letting anything in. If you want to rededicate your life, meet me over here after service. Maybe you've never received the Holy Spirit baptism. Jesus said you shall receive power after the Holy Spirit comes upon you. See, as a Christian, he's in you, but he needs to be upon. He wants all of you, amen? If you want to learn more and, and pray for the Holy Spirit baptism, come on up. Now, maybe you need prayer for healing, deliverance. Maybe someone, come on, needs their frequency shifted this morning. <laughs> you want prayer for yourself or a family member or a loved one, come on up after service, and I want to pray with you. I'll stay here as long as we can. Visitors, thank you so much for coming. And uh, by the way, so yeah, we are having service on Christmas. It's probably going to be a shorter service, but I'm not going to promise that. Uh, I mean, we're already here right now. Okay. No, it'll probably be shorter. But so, um, all right, guys, prayer. All of this, all of these good things that are happening in our services is because we're pressing in and praying. Amen. Tuesday prayer call. Wednesday prayer here at 7. Friday morning soaking prayer. Man, that's a relaxing time in the Lord. Um, and then our service on Sunday. But if you're not able to make any of those, would you guys promise that you'll pray at home for us? Continue to do it, and we're going to move forward. So invite family and friends. Bring them in. Amen? Have a blessed week, everyone. We love you all. Yeah, thank you.